Professor Stoddy is here again. We're going to be talking about our defensive structure that we're going to be utilizing this year with our uh, U15 squad. Uh, basically, this is just what we call a uh, up and out defense. So what we have here, we'll have a breakdown over here. They have their nine, first attacker, second attacker, third attacker. We have our line here, A, B, C, D, and then we have our nine over here. <clears throat> Essentially what we're doing is we're utilizing this sideline as another defender on the field. Okay, so what generally will happen on attack, okay, the ball will come from nine, go up to the attacker here, and they'll kind of drift a little bit, just a little bit. Some may go straight, but most will have a bit of a drift. What we're going to do is take advantage of that situation, okay, so we'll have our B defender, okay, he just comes up hard and pushes to the inside, okay, C comes up, pushes to the inside, D comes up, pushes to the inside, okay. What this has the effect of doing is keep moving these attackers out of bounds or running them out of space. Every team wants to score out wide. Okay, so now we have this sort of a situation after our defensive line moves up. So now we have, oops, so we'll just erase that. Now we have attacker one is here, attacker two is now here, and attacker three is now here. So we've pushed inside. So what, the questions we have to ask, are the options for this third attacker? Let's presume the ball gets out that far. He can run out of bounds, okay, step out of bounds, or get tackled in this area around here, okay, which is still a net positive for us. We've stopped forward progress of the ball. Okay. I'm just not coordinated today. Okay, so we potentially have a tackle there. Okay, if the second attacker realizes, wait a minute, I can't get the ball out to A through the third attacker, I'm going to step back inside. Okay, what does this do for this guy? So he's coming this way and he cuts back in. He cuts back in. He's going to get nailed by this guy. Where's the advantage line? Right down here. We've already big net gain now. We've pushed them back. We've caused their forward staff to retreat and come through the gate so they're still in an onside position. Okay? If this player pushes a little, a little hard and this guy steps inside, okay, into the space, who do you think has the responsibility of that man now? It becomes B. Okay, he's passed the ball. We shift our shift our defensive line over. Now he takes the inside channel. That is a massive hit. A1 passes the ball to A2. A2 goes, oh, I can't do anything. I step. And I'm just getting absolutely lit up by the guy coming coming across, working from the inside. Okay? So what we're doing with our defense, once again, is we're pushing them outside. Right, we're trying to work them outside, and if they want to make that cutback, okay, if they want to make that cutback against the grain of the attack, the inside man, okay, he decides he wants to cut back, the inside man has an opportunity here to make what we call a domination tackle, a massive, massive open field hit where we're looking not only to drive the ball carrier back, but potentially to turn it over and create a scoring opportunity for us. Okay. So a few keys to this. Okay. A few keys to this is we must move essentially as a gate, as a line. Okay. I'm going to find something here which could demonstrate. Oh, look at this. Amazing you can find your garage. It's this straight line here. Okay. A, B, C, D. What we're doing is we're closing the gate on them. Okay. We're closing the gate. Now, at any point, do you see A, B, C, or D? 
Oop. A, B, C, or D come out of that line. If we keep working as a gate, what we're doing is we're shutting down the opportunities. Okay, bang, up, bam, up, bam, up. Okay, what we need here is discipline on the line. And when I talk about line discipline, and we'll keep on going over this, it's what we do in our warm ups. When you go A, B, C, A, B, C, and we're all doing it together. If we have our attackers running up again, A, 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 three, two, one. Say C shoots out of the line, that's why I call the shooter. If he runs out of the line really quickly that way, and this player is coming in like this, and this player is coming in like this, what have we just created now? We've created areas here to exploit, or the attackers to exploit, okay? We have to be really aware, at this point we haven't, we haven't worked the gate, okay? We've left a big chink in the armor here, okay? That would be called the shooter line, and it's an absolute killer on defense. If someone gets a little ahead of the rest of the team, let's say that. So that's line discipline, okay? Also what's important here is line speed. Now we call this a passive defense. It doesn't mean we just stand there and, and move across, okay? Even though that can be effective, you know, especially if uh, they've got another attacker out there. We're willing to give up space along the field, unless it's right near our goal line. We're willing to give up space so that we can reform our defensive line. <clears throat> Um, hold on, I just lost my notes here, or train of thought. Oh yes, so, generally what we'll be doing is we're working up and out, okay, but we still have to take some steps, we still have to put some degree of pressure on the attackers or else they're going to be at the advantage. Okay, so we still need to take a couple of hard steps up the line, so straight, and then we push them. Straight, and we push them. Straight, and we push them. Okay, we're cutting off, trying to cut off their inside options. If they do create the inside option, then we're going to line up for these domination tackles in these areas. Okay, if during the course of a game, we actually outnumber we actually outnumber the attackers, so we have another defender in here. So we go E's out here, and we have an F over here. We've got, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six guys against three. What we can do now is we can say, fine, okay, we've got this guy. We've got, <clears throat> sorry, overloaded on defense, so we still have an up and out. What we can do here is we can just have this guy come screaming up that way as a shooter, okay? And then we still have this guy here. So now we're putting a great deal of pressure on the defense. And that's where we can really affect turnover ball. Get in there, create a whole bunch of disruption within their attacking formation, and then by sheer weight of numbers and opportunities, we can steal and or poach the ball, okay? Some of the, uh, some of the jargon we like to use, okay, and we can get real bad with this in rugby. As people start, you know, we talk about communication and how important it is, but if not everyone knows what the words are we're using, then it's very difficult to um, uh, uh, coordinate our defense properly. So one of the things we like to do is if the ball is being shifted out, we'll be calling push. And that'd be left or right, left, right. Okay. When we start our, our attacking defense, we're going up or, and ready. Okay, and of course, A, B, C. Okay. A very strong, well-organized and uh, well-communicating defense is very intimidating for a team to, team to face. 
in this age grade, in the next age grade, and even in, in, uh, in the future when you guys move up to men's rugby, hopefully, you'll see there will be some players out there, like I like to call, they just have an X factor. They're either way bigger, way stronger, way faster than the defense, and they can exploit a weak, a weak uh, defense. However, if we work as a team on defense, what we're trying to do is mitigate their opportunities for bringing these X factor players into play. We've played a lot of teams that have a lot of great players and they're completely stymied and frustrated by a continual attacking and well-organized defense over the years. Uh, what other uh, jargon have we got in here? Oh yes. So the communication is important, so if we're pushing left, 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 these guys have to let each guy know that they've got the inside channel covered. So something as simple as I have inside, I have inside, and then <clears throat> uh, another one could be shift. So push left, push right. That could also be shift left, shift right. As long as we're on the same page with the jargon, this will make things a whole lot easier for us going forward. Okay, I think that's all we're going to talk about today. That's probably enough. This is just a brief demonstration or a brief, brief synopsis of what we're going to be trying to accomplish this year. So once again, we're going the up, a couple hard steps, push out, taking the inside shoulder of the attacker. Okay? We're cutting off his inside option if he wants to. What are we doing? We're setting up for a domination tackle. And here, so at the very least, they're going to be stepping out of bounds or getting a turnover opportunity on the outside. Cheers.